Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will discuss abdominal tuberculosis. Abdominal tuberculosis is common extrapulmonary manifestation of TB. It includes tuberculosis of gastrointestinal tract, tuberculosis of the mesenteric lymph nodes, and tuberculosis of peritoneum and omentum, plus solid organs sometimes in the liver and spleen we see the lesions. Abdominal tuberculosis can be divided into following types. Tuberculosis of gastrointestinal tract, which may be of three types, ulcerative, hyperplastic, and sclerotic or plastic type. Sometimes there may be combination of ulcerative and hyperplastic types. Then in the mesentery, it may be as mesenteric lymphadenitis or it may be mesenteric cysts, abscesses or bowel adhesions. In the peritoneum, it may be ascites which may be generalized or localized or it may be fibrous type when there will be so many adhesions, adhesive type or plastic type, or there may be milling nodules, multiple small nodules studying whole of the peritoneum. Then the fourth type, which of course is not so common, is tuberculosis of the solid organs, that is liver and spleen. What are the roots of spread? Intestinal tuberculosis caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis and it is mainly from swallowed sputum in pulmonary tuberculosis by the patient himself usually. The second type is milk bowel infection which is caused by mycobacterium bovis and the third is from intestinal tuberculosis from mesenteric lymph nodes. Blood spreads. Blood spread occurs when the pulmonary tuberculosis spreads into the bloodstream, causing bacteremia, and then they settle in the intestine. Lymphatic spread. This is tuberculosis from the intestine. It can spread to the mesenteric lymph nodes. Genitourinary tuberculosis can spread to peritoneum and of course another type is through the bile when granuloma of the liver excretes bacilli in the bile. Intestinal tuberculosis, the ileocecal region is most commonly involved because of the following reasons. Number one, it is rich in lymphatics, pears, patches. Number two, the media is alkaline, which favors the growth of the bacteria. And the ileocecal valve, there is stasis of the contents in the terminal area. So there is a longer contact time for the bacteria to stay and then produce the disease. Terminal ileum is the maximum area of absorption. Because of these four factors, ileocecal region is most commonly involved. Clinical features. Abdominal pain, dull, vague pain, sometimes colicky pain. It increases after taking food and it is relieved by vomiting. Another manifestation is diarrhea. It can alternate with constipation. Then there may be flatulence, borborygmy, audible bowel sounds, abdominal distension, there may be anorexia, loss of appetite, loss of weight, pallor, tiredness. These are non specific symptoms. What are the signs? 
patient usually is malnourished and pale and there is visible investigation complete blood counts should be done in all cases x-ray chest should be done sputum for acid force bacilli barium studies sometimes done barium need and follow through and sometimes barium anemia as well ct abdomen with iv and oral contrast is diagnostic in most of the cases capsule enteroscopy and colonoscopy sometimes done and diagnostic leptoscopy is also one of the investigations which sometimes is done in difficult cases to reach at the diagnosis we can take a biopsy by leptoscopy treatment of intestinal tuberculosis if there is no evidence of intestinal obstruction treatment is anti tuberculous therapy but with obstruction we have to do some surgical procedure if there is a solitary stricture do stricturoplasty if multiple strictures at long intervals are present again stricturoplasty is ideal to save the gut but if there are multiple strictures in a short segment then we have to do resection and anastomosis if the stricture is long again we will do resection and anastomosis surgical treatment for hyperplastic ileocecal tuberculosis the operation is right hemiplectomy or rather limited right hemiplectomy all cases receive anti tuberculous therapy for about 9 to 12 months plus we have to do nutritional supplementation and we have to correct anemia some cases may need blood transfusion before and after surgery tuberculosis mesenteric lymphadenitis this is the second most common type it may be acute mesenteric lymphadenitis which is common in children and it mimics as acute appendicitis there is pain in the right iliac fossa vomiting fever and tenderness a tender mass may be palpable in the right iliac fossa for children usually we do appendectomy because the clinical diagnosis is appendicitis when we open and we see that the mesenteric lymph nodes are enlarged so along with the appendectomy a biopsy an excision biopsy of the mesenteric lymph node should be taken chronic lymphadenitis again in children there is loss of appetite loss of weight failure to thrive fever pallor and weakness on deep palpation nodes may be palpable in right iliac fossa ct abdomen diagnostic laparoscopy and biopsy these are the investigation which we have to do on confirmation of the diagnosis anti tuberculous therapy is started along with nutritional supplementation another presentation in the mesentery is pseudo mesenteric cyst this is due to caseation of the mesenteric lymph nodes if intestinal obstruction is present laparotomy will be needed but if there is no obstruction we will give anti tuberculous therapy sometimes it presents as a calcified lesion one of the mesenteric lymph nodes gets calcified after confirmation we will start anti tuberculous therapy tuberculous peritonitis it may be acute it may be chronic pathophysiology is there is intense exudation and it leads to a cystic form of the tuberculous peritonitis exudation with minimal fibroblastic reaction 
this society may be loculated. It is localized. It is not generalized society. And sometimes there is extensive fibroblastic reaction when it will be plastic form or the adhesive type of the tuberculous peritonitis. If there is secondary infection, it will be purulent form of the tuberculous peritonitis. Astromosis. Surgical treatment for hyperplastic ileocecal tuberculosis. The operation is right hemiplectomy or rather limited right hemiplectomy. All cases receive anti-tuberculous therapy for about 9 to 12 months. Plus, we have to do nutritional supplementation and we have to correct anemia. Some cases may need blood transfusion before and after. Loculated or insisted form. There is localized swelling, there is no shifting dullness, and it commonly presents in adults. Fibrous or plastic form of tuberculous peritonitis. In this, there is no cytis, there are dense adhesions, sometimes there may be formation of bands and strictures, and usually it presents with intestinal obstruction and leprotomy will be needed. Purulent form is seen in females mainly. It is complication of genitourinary tuberculosis, tuberculous salpingitis, presents as acute peritonitis due to secondary infection. Treatment of course is laparotomy, drainage of pus, peritoneal toilet, and then we will start KTT. Prognosis usually is poor in this condition.